Under the federal rules of evidence, if a witness is not testifying as an expert, testimony in the form of an opinion is limited to one that is d a rationally based on the witness's perception b helpful to clearly understanding the witness's testimony or to determining a fact in issue and c not based on scientific technical or other specialized knowledge within the scope of rule 702 and at the beginning of a global public health crisis as late as april 2020 scientists like Onur Aden, Bashar Iman and M. Toher A. Safe, publishing a preprint, had stated, while acknowledging that the mechanism of spread of the current novel coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, is not clearly understood, that it is thought that spread can occur through droplets containing virus particles when infected persons sneeze, cough, or speak, reiterating general guidance the CDC would publish in May 2022. Testing your rationally based perception, as well as reading comprehension, regarding the use of the passive voice, that the virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person. Between people who are in close contact with one another, within about six feet. Through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks, thought that these droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. The CDC had only stated, in cautious language, COVID-19 may be, only may be, spread by people who are not showing symptoms, and, perhaps, on profession of faith, like many, that is exactly what you had believed, distinct from something that you know, established by the science. However, Assuming that you cannot be certified as an expert in a federal court, can you testify to the fact that the Savior was risen, the claim celebrated by Christians on this most holy of days for those in this religious faith affiliation? Can we get a witness? Under the rules for witness examination in the Commonwealth of Virginia, not just every resident or even citizen, but every person is competent to be a witness except as otherwise provided in other evidentiary principles, rules of court, Virginia statutes, or common law. Moreover, under the Civil Rights Act of 1866, codified at 42 U.S.C. Section 1981, every person, in equal protection, shall enjoy an unfettered right to sue, be parties, give evidence, and to the full and equal benefit of all laws and proceedings for the security of persons and property as is enjoyed by white citizens, and shall be subject to like punishment, pains, penalties, taxes, licenses, and exactions of every kind, and to no other. Can we get a witness? Any challenge on equal protection grounds is evaluated under strict scrutiny if it interferes with a fundamental right, like the freedom of religion and conscience, or if a government action discriminates against a suspect class. The central unifying tenet of the Christian faith is the claim was encapsulated in the Nicene Creed, adopted by the Roman Catholic Church in Second Vatican Ecumenical Encyclical, or Vatican II, and they believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. They believe that, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. They believe that he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. And, on Easter Sunday, often today described as Resurrection Sunday, the common message throughout Christendom in homilies and sermons is that he is risen, believe it or not. A similar claim had been made by the Virginia State Health Commissioner on June 8, 2020, issuing an order to every public school division and claiming in a definitive, declarative statement that COVID-19 spreads from person to person, transmitted via respiratory droplets, and can be spread from an infected person who does not have symptoms to another person. Very different from the guidance from the CDC that had only suggested that this may be the way in which infections had occurred. According to the science. Believe it or not. In a legal matter before a court of law, 
at least three different standards of proof are within the realm of possibility, proof beyond a reasonable doubt, proof by clear and convincing evidence, and proof by a preponderance of evidence, a measure of degree. Proving a matter by a preponderance of evidence is the least exacting burden of proof, and, for legal sufficiency points, if there is more than a scintilla of evidence to support the finding, the no evidence challenge fails. Is he risen? Do you believe it, or not? According to one Northern Virginia pastor, a former COVID chaplain in the U.S. Army Reserve at Fort Sam Houston in Texas, who now serves at the Pentagon and is responsible for claims of religious exemption claimed by soldiers during the pandemic, there are over 4,200 religions, but only the Christian faith has a savior who had gone into a tomb and rose again, and so, for the next few moments, on this Resurrection Sunday, let us, like in a courtroom, examine the presented evidence, to consider. The facts supporting this miraculous proposition that a Savior had died and was risen from the dead for whatever reason, and he proclaims that he takes as incontrovertible evidence the authority of the scriptures and the testimony as to what some persons had claimed that they saw. However, were one to apply the traditional rules that govern in a courtroom, evidence that is only hearsay is not admissible, which is defined as any statements a declarant renders for which he or she may have only heard, and cannot offer as an eyewitness to prove the truth of the matter asserted. Arguably, in a court of law, whatever Matthew, Mark, Luke or John may have said would be considered as inadmissible hearsay, because they were not there when they crucified their Lord, nor when he was reported to have risen from the tomb. Still, after the passage of thousands of years, most reasonable persons would accept that the historical Jesus, who most scholars concede had at one time lived, had at some point died, and the only remaining proposition to establish is whether this man had on Easter indeed risen again from the dead so that today he lives. So, accepting what is written and claimed to be the authoritative word of the scriptures in which Christians profess a belief, let us continue, delving deeper into this examination of the claims that a Savior had died on a cross and on Easter had risen. According to the Synoptic Gospels, recorded by Matthew, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place, and when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers, then said, Tell people, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. If we were to accept this claim as true, that the disciples had wanted to create an illusion of a fulfillment of prophecy, what evidence might be presented to substantiate this claim? Certainly, the soldiers would not have great incentive to first go to the governor with such a report that they had been somehow defeated by some amateur force of disciples, and they might want to have some support from the religious leaders who had handed over this prisoner to be crucified for attempting to cause an insurrection, but these claims danger to the empire had already been dismissed as a not credible threat by the governor, Pontius Pilate, who had yet reluctantly acceded to the demands of the religious leaders, permitting them to crucify a man innocent under the laws of the Roman Emperor, and had mockingly proclaimed him to all as the King of the Jews. Why would the governor believe them now? Under the federal rules of evidence, when a hearsay statement has been admitted in evidence, the declarant's credibility may be attacked, and then supported, by any evidence that would be admissible for those purposes if the declarant had testified as a witness. Further, the court may admit evidence of the declarant's inconsistent statement or conduct, regardless of when it occurred or whether the declarant had an opportunity to explain or deny it. And, if the party against whom the statement was admitted calls the declarant as a witness, the party may examine the declarant on the statement as if on cross-examination. And the principal witness for the case in chief, the very first witness regarding a reported resurrection from the dead in every gospel account is one woman, Mary Magdalene, a woman of arguably a questionable reputation. This message was approved by Major Mike Webb. Honest. And y'all go back now.
Deal.